A weight loss trend taking over social media. There's a promising new weight loss drug that's getting a lot of attention. The Danish company that makes Ozempic is worth more than the Coca-Cola company and McDonald's combined. Yeah. When I look around this room, I can't help but wonder, is Ozempic right for me? I lost nearly three stone by taking Ozempic. If it's approved by the FDA, the medication could become the best-selling drug, get this, of all time. Oh! Oh! By now, you've all heard of the popular weight loss drug called Ozempic, being approved by the FDA on December 5th, 2017, which is nearly eight years ago now. It has helped millions lose weight, but it is not just weight that you and I are looking to lose. It's fat. So has science finally delivered an alternative next generation drug that actually targets fat loss? Do we finally have the magic bullet for weight loss? Let's find out and take a dive into Retitrudide. So what is Retitrudide? It's worth starting off by explaining what Ozempic is, which the generic drug name is semaglutide. Ozempic is the brand name, one of the brand names that produces it. Ozempic is a GLP-1 agonist. That means it is a molecule that attaches to the GLP-1 receptor in our bodies and activates them. The activation of the GLP-1 receptor occurs naturally in our bodies after we ingest food. So. Once this receptor is activated, what happens in our bodies? Basically, glucose-dependent insulin release is increased. Digestion is also slowed down and hunger is diminished. So that is what the GLP-1 receptor or agonization of the GLP-1 receptor does. After Ozempic, we had trisepatide, which is the generic drug name. Brand names are Manjaro or Zepabound. Now, trisempatide was a dual agonist, so it would agonize the GLP-1 receptor along with the GIP receptor. So what does the agonization of the GIP receptor trigger in the body? It has a very strong agonism to insulin release, so it boosts insulin even more than the GLP-1 alone, especially after meals. And it also aids in lipid metabolization or fat utilization. So it's literally increasing our metabolization of fat. Now over to retatrudide, which is the generic drug name and there's still no brand that kind of owns it yet. It is in phase three clinical trials. So that means it will be potentially approved by the FDA and later released in around 2026 or 2027. And it is a triple agonist. So it's a GLP-1 agonist, a GIP agonist, and a glucagon agonist. So what does the glucagon receptor agonization trigger? It actually stimulates energy expenditure through fat breakdown or lipolysis. So another pathway of breaking down fat and converting it into energy. And it also encourages thermogenesis, which is basically elevating the body's temperature, and hepatic metabolism, which is the rate at which the liver processes toxins, glycogen, etc. in the body. Okay, so in theory, retatrudide is great because not only does it reduce your hunger, it can also increase your energy while you're at a potential energy deficit. But more of that to come in the later chapters. Okay, so what are the key findings of the clinical trials on retatrudide so far? The clinical trials of retatrudide had multiple groups. So the test patients were split up into multiple groups with different dosage protocols for each group. The group that lost the most weight lost 24% of their body weight in 48 weeks or so. So a drastic reduction in body weight. Mind you, these people were categorized as obese as well, worth noting that. They were obese, but not diabetic. Another finding was improved metabolic and liver health. So the findings show that it's reduced fatty liver by about 82% over the 48 week period. Mind you, this was at a 12 milligram per week dose, okay? And more than 85% of the patients normalized their liver fat after the tests. The drug also increased insulin sensitivity, lowered triglycerides, and reduced liver associated biomarkers linked to fibrosis. So there was a group that had type two diabetes as well, 
in the tests. And in these groups, it showed that it lowered HbA1c by around 1.3 to 2%. And also in this group, they lost around 16.9% of their body weight. And the reduction of HbA1c basically means that they had better blood sugar levels. Keep in mind, these are a type 2 diabetes group. So this type 2 diabetes group lost 16.9%, which is less than the rest of the test subjects. The reason for this is, of course, they had type 2 diabetes. So this type of affliction is typically associated with a huge difficulty in weight reduction. Also, the trial length of the type 2 diabetes group was less, it was 36 weeks as opposed to 48 weeks. And also the medication that they could potentially be taking alongside with the retrotrudite can impair the effectiveness of retrotrudite itself. So what did the tests show about the safety and tolerability of the drug? So the drug was generally well tolerated, it seems. The main sort of side effect was gastrointestinal related. So basically nausea, and this was typically seen in the higher doses of the tests, it showed that it was very liver safe or friendly. And some of the phase two participants lost around 31%, which can be a bit concerning. It was over an eight month period. And yeah, it was rapid weight loss, which is something to kind of uh, consider. The clinical findings also showed that retrotrudite lowers inflammation. It also outperformed other drugs like trisepatide. So the retrotrudite patients lost 22%, while the trisepatide patients lost around 14% over the same kind of trial period. And the final report worth noting from the clinical trials was it definitely lowered triglycerides. So we're talking about 40% reduction. And it also reduced a triglyceride-related marker called APOC3 protein. And it reduced this by around 38%. So now that we covered what the clinical trials are showing so far, as we all know, this drug is already being used by individuals outside the clinical trials. And what are the anecdotes that we're seeing so far? The first one is better nutrient partitioning. So this relates to how our body loses weight when it comes to losing muscle, or losing fat, which of the two is being lost the most, etc. Okay, so why does retrotrudide have better nutrient partitioning? It's mainly because of the glucagon receptor agonization. This helps boost energy. So even if you're in a caloric deficit, you're going to kind of have more energy in relation to that caloric deficit. And it also promotes fat oxidization specifically. Here we can understand how it favors more fat loss as opposed to muscle loss. Also keep in mind that the GLP-1 and the GIP agonization is helping to control insulin as well, which can protect muscle loss. The drug has shown to improve insulin sensitivity, which is linked to the uptake of glycogen in the muscles. Again, potentially reducing the risk of losing muscle compared to fat. It also reduces liver fat, as we previously stated, and this improves the body's metabolic flexibility. So it allows the body to switch between fat burning and carb burning more efficiently, which is a core aspect of nutrient partitioning. Now, looking at the clinical trials, although they showed pretty rapid weight loss, they also showed that lean body mass was not reduced as much as the previous drug studies. So they basically showed that retrotrudide was more fat loss dominant as opposed to muscle loss dominant. Keep in mind that these are anecdotes. So the, the clinical trials did not perform any DEXA scans or any ways of kind of ensuring that there was uh, more fat lost as opposed to muscle loss during the tests. This includes MRIs as well, by the way. And the biggest contributor to nutrient partitioning is exercise and diet as well. So if you're going to eat a shitty diet, the drug isn't going to work as efficiently as one would hope. And what we mean here by diet is uh, high enough protein ingestion per day. We will potentially have long-term muscle loss data once the phase three clinical results are out. So another anecdotal 
benefit of retrotrudite is improved cognition. Being it increases insulin sensitivity and lowers blood sugar at the same time, we can say that it's definitely going to improve brain function because insulin resistance and poorly controlled glucose in the blood have been directly associated with cognitive decline and dementia risk. Some of the drugs in the GLP-1 family are actually being studied for Alzheimer's disease prevention due to their metabolic and neuroprotective effects seen so far. Another way cognition can be improved is reduced inflammation. So chronic inflammation is linked to impaired neurogenesis and cognitive slowing. So retetrudite can have direct neuroprotective actions. One is through the GLP-1 agonization, which have been shown in animal studies that the GLP-1 agonist can cross the blood-brain barrier and reduce amyloid beta, which is linked to Alzheimer's. Also, the GIP and the glucagon agonization has been linked in animal studies to possible synaptic and mitochondrial benefits. So keep in mind that in the studies, there were no cognitive endpoints published. Until now, there has been no human tests related to the cognitive improvements of retrotrudite. Another interesting one is retrotrudite can help improve flow state. So flow state, as we know is when you are so immersed in a task and so present that you have basically no distractions and you're completely focused on the objective or task in front of you. And this can be through improved blood sugar levels. You're not having energy rises and energy dips. You're lowering inflammation, like we said, which can improve cognitive ability. And yeah, you're releasing energy or glycogen from the liver at a steady rate where that is going to contribute to your energy levels and potentially contribute to a flow state. Another way retrotrude that can improve flow state or can improve basically cognitive ability is the way it balances out dopamine. So the way it affects dopamine is through the GLP-1 pathway, which has been associated with improving overall dopamine tone. This is because there are actually receptors in the brain for GLP-1 that are linked to dopamine. Animal studies even showed dopamine changes with GLP-1 agonization. Mainly, the dopamine spikes were blunted and dopamine tone was improved, meaning dopamine was more sort of at a consistent level and there were no peaks and troughs or not as much. Okay, and one more anecdotal is that it can improve physical well-being. So many of the obesity patients reported a feeling of higher energy and they were able to perform more activity, etc., which is obviously a great contributor to your well-being, right? So to conclude, retetrudide is most likely going to be a huge success, in my opinion. The clinical trials and anecdotals show benefits that are pretty much insane. The fact that you can control your hunger, which makes dieting easier, and at the same time, increase your energy. So typically when you're in a caloric deficit, you're literally restricting energy. So your output in your everyday life is going to automatically decrease. But the fact that retrotrudite hijacks that system and is increasing lipolysis. So it's, one, it's burning more fat. Two, it's increasing your energy. Three, it's reducing food noise, as many people refer to it. So you don't need to constantly feel hungry or be thinking about your next meal, etc. And the fact that it increases so many health markets that we covered and many which we did not even cover makes it just a miracle drug, in my opinion. Of course, we still need to see what the phase three clinical trials portray. There might be some side effects, like there are with the GLP-1 agonists, where we've seen nausea that we mentioned, but also potentially constipation, diarrhea, vomiting. But keep in mind that retrotrudite, although it agonizes the GLP-1 receptor, it does not do so to the same extent as a pure GLP-1 agonist like Ozempic or semaglutide. So it's less powerful on that aspect because it's a triple agonist. And keep in mind, this is not three medications in one or three molecules in one. It's literally one medication or one compound that agonizes three receptors. Anyway, that is my brief overview. I hope it was brief at least regarding retrotrudite. If you have already dabbled with retrotrudite, please let me know. If you've heard anything as well and you haven't used it, please also let me know. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Many of you that are watching my videos are still not subscribed. I've heard YouTubers say this so many times, but I can't believe I'm saying it myself. But there it is. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. And as always, onwards and...
and upwards.